Hello everyone and welcome back to the Sims 4 Random Pets Genetics Challenge! Here in our Labarkatory, where we aren't really barking today, we'd more be doing something like saying Pika Pika because we have Pikachu again! Oh my gosh, I have no idea what I'm going to be doing with Pikachu, but I know that he is so freaking cute and I am so grateful that Kalino has made more fantastic custom content that really reflects how precious he is. I mean, just look at those ears. And look at that tail! I love it so much, the little zigzag tail! And I can't wait to see what Pikachu's children will inherit from the egg today, because we are going to be crossbreeding our Pikachu with an Eevee! Look at this Eevee! I am so pleased with how he came out. This is not an Eevee I created, it is one that I snagged off of the gallery. Let me go ahead and pull up this Eevee's fantastic parent, Galaxy Galaxy. Ye cat. Galaxy 6 cat? Hmm. Well, you guys can see the spelling right there. So if you're interested in a cat-based Eevee, so a feline-based Eevee, this is the one that I ended up choosing because it was just so striking to see how they decided to outline all of the markings. And normally, like, it's like not the style I go for, but somehow it really worked on this Eevee. And what I did is I added the Pikachu ears so that the ears are even more pointy and Eevee-like. And I added the raccoon tail so that now we or not the raccoon tail it's the big fluffy tail that i always put on raccoons for some reason because i think it's cute even though they don't have big fluffy tails in real life it'd be cute if they did but we added this big fluffy tail onto the eevee and it just really came together wonderfully i love it so much i am actually thinking about like I don't know, having one of my mad sim scientist sims end up opening up a portal to the Pokemon world and throwing a few of them into my sims game because they're so freaking cute. But there are a lot of Eevees out there who are based off of dogs and the fox model in The Sims 4 as well. So if you guys know a great Eevee to suggest, do please let me know in the comments because I'm definitely interested in seeing what other Eeveelutions we might be able to have in our lab in the future. For today though, we are going to go off the feline-based Eevee because that is what we need if we're gonna be crossbreeding it with Pikachu! Which you can actually do in the games, just you're only ever gonna end up with a Pikachu or an Eevee. And here, we might end up with something that has the traits of both parents, which is pretty exciting. But all right, so what is these two's love story? I actually think that with this Eevee and Pikachu, they're both from the forest. So I think that there is a beautiful dappled forest where the sunlight trickles down through the green leaves. And this Eevee has, uh, he's been roaming around the place, doing his own thing, thinking about maybe sitting on that there moss rock one day and turning into a Leafeon, one of my personal favorite Pokemon. Imagine that, I like the leaf based one, huh. But while he has been roaming about looking for snacks, he stumbles upon a berry bush. While he begins to pick off the berries and nibble from them, a Pikachu sticks her head out in surprise. And yes, I know that this would technically be a male Pikachu because it has, well, you know what? It's kind of rounded at the bottom, so you could sort of say it's either a female or a male because the females have the little heart-shaped tail. But we'll just go ahead and roll with it. Maybe this is Gen 1 stuff where we didn't have that difference between the Pikachus. But anyway, the Pikachu sticks her head out in surprise, as she had been collecting all the berries from this bush very meticulously so that she could line them up just right in her little Pikachu storage place. Because Pikachus are based off of rodents, and I could imagine that just as they stuff their cheeks with tons of electricity, they probably stuff their cheeks with tons of berries as well, and then trot off to go take it back to wherever Pikachus decide to have their little home. Do you think they den in like holes like chipmunks and have cute little catches, the wild Pikachus, where they like dig out little holes and they like put everything just right? Or do you think they like to hang out up in trees like squirrels and build drays? I kind of think the dray thing because I could see them using their tails like lightning rods the way they do and wanting to be up closer to the, um, the lightning. But then if they do that in a tree and the lightning storm comes by, won't they light the tree on fire and then burn the forest down? So maybe for their own protection and the sake of the forest, they actually den underground or and like come out during lightning storms in a clear field to be able to like be like, yay, I'm getting hit by lightning, which I think only a Pikachu would enjoy. Well, and all the other electric types, but you know what I mean. But anyway, 
Uh, I have no idea where she dents. I'm gonna need your guys' help as pixel biologists to decide this question of Pikachu biology. Anyway, she sticks her head out, full mouth and cheeks absolutely stuffed full of berries, and the adorable, ridiculous sight of a Pikachu with cheeks just overflowing with berries, and berries in her hands, and berries all over the place, and little flowers from the berry bush in her fur, just makes the Eevee burst out laughing. That's just so ridiculously cute, and he was immediately enamored. It took him a while, and he decided not to evolve so that he could stay, you know, same size as her. Uh, it took him a while to win her over, but eventually, these two were able to have a litter of adorable babies. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, we'll come over to the Pikachu. Hello, little one. Let's see what your babies are going to look like. I am so oh my gosh. Oh, I can't handle the kittens. We definitely still have to try just a normal cat and a Pikachu, but I wanted to do more like Pokemon Pokemon crossbreeds first. All right, first baby. <gasps> you look nothing like either of your parents and you have red eyes. Oh my gosh. Welcome to Anna from Anna and Anna San, uh, who has uh, you really love the dragon wolf hybrids i'm very glad for that anna we'll have to do some more like dragony wolf hybrids in the future because i know that you guys are really into them but oh my gosh welcome to the family i i wonder are you <gasps> like an albino eevee kind of like an albino eevee that would be so cool what a fun 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 little creation you are and we'll have to see what kind of tail uh you're gonna have the same set of ears but we'll have to see what kind of tail you end up with like, I think the tail is going to determine if this one's going to have any electric abilities or not. Huh. That's a that's a head-scratcher on, like, what... Like, again, you guys need to help me out with figuring out, like, what kind of abilities these babies would probably have. But all right. Anna, you are a prowler who is fluffy and mischievous. So welcome to the family. All right. I'm going to pull up another one of the names. As usual, guys, if you would like to become one of these adorable tiny baby crossbreeds, all you need to do is leave a comment down below, and the random comment picker may select you in the future. Also, this is such an adorable, 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 adorable kitten. Oh my gosh. Oh, we'll have to see what normal cats and Pikachu look like in the future. That's just too cute. <gasps> Whoa! Another one? Another one with eyes that are just this stunning and purple? You look like like you belong near a moonstone, little child. All right, this is going to be Midnight from Midnight Games. I am very glad that you too enjoy the dragon wolves. Apparently that's an extremely popular one. And you, my friend, are a mystery. We'll have to see what your tale is for what kind of type you've inherited. Who is friendly, spoiled, and talkative, which is also very adorable. All right, and then let's go ahead and come up with... Oh, oh so precious, so precious. Oh my gosh, it's a blind Pikachu! Okay, so we have a blind Pikachu son named Brandon. Welcome, Brandon. So you too have um, grown up, or you too are now in our group, and you are the first Pikachu, but we'll have to see if you'll end up being, I guess, normal type, or if you'll end up being uh, electric type with those little, little cheeks, if they'll store electricity or not, depending on the tail that you inherit when you grow up. Oh my gosh, what beautiful fur on this one, my goodness. All right, and Brandon, you are curious, affectionate, and frisky, which sounds adorable. Let's see what's next, and then here we go. Oh my gosh, what a cute baby. They're all so precious. <gasps> Another blind Pikachu! This is like mildly tragic, but I guess maybe they could use their... I, I guess if they end up inheriting electric type, they could use electrolocation, like the... the I'm saying the wrong word. Um, but they could sense, like, the electromagnetic energy of the animals. What is it that sharks do? Sharks do the same thing, where they not only can, like, quote-unquote, smell the blood in the water, but they can sense the electrical impulses that actually 
are sent through the water, platypus use the same thing in order to figure out like where the worms and the bugs that they eat under the mud in the, the little rivers are. Platypus will run their bill along the mud and they don't just kind of like dig through the mud the way that shorebirds and ducks do. They also are sensing the electrical energy sent off by the contraction of muscles in the worms and they can snap them up as a result. That was really quite the segue, but I taught you guys a lot of things just then, and we just came up with how we don't have to worry about the blind Pikachu babies. <laughs> Huzzah, science! Oh, oh! Meow again, child! Meow again for me! I wish to hear your voice! Oh! Oh my gosh, you're precious! Kimberly, welcome to the family! Oh, gracious me. All right, and then we have a glutton who is lazy and curious. So welcome our little curious glutton uh, who is lazy and blind, but don't worry because you can sense it with your electromagnetic skills. And Kimberly, a land dragon and a murdog sound like a really fun mix. We're gonna have to go back to our dragon soon because you guys love them so much. All right, next baby. Very cute, very cute. <gasps> Um, what? Okay, I'm a little worried how we just have nothing but blind Pikachus at the moment. <laughs> this has been a litter that I'm somewhat concerned about, but I'm just going to assume that they can, like, sense it all with their electric energy. All right, this is going to be Dexter. And Dexter, you're a little bit of a handful because you are aggressive and mischievous and a glutton. So I, I think that you like to rule your territory with uh, a shocking... Like a shocking twist. Oh, look at his little tail. Oh my gosh, it's gonna be so fun to see what you grow up into. But gosh, I'm a little worried. Three blind children? Hmm. And like two albino Eevees? Hmm. 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 Not sure about this. All right, last baby. <gasps> what? Another one that looks like a little raccoon. Oh my gosh. All right, kind of close to the Eevee, but not entirely there. Uh, and this one is going to be, here we go. This one's going to be Addison, a name suggested by Wolfie Fox. And you also suggested the names Basil, Tuckler, Wink, and Everest. So I'm pretty sure you are a big fan of my friend Stacy's Dogcraft series and possibly even a big fan of her books because that sounds extremely familiar. And you are a aggressive, aloof, fluffy baby. Well, you know, guys, none of these turned out anything like what I was expecting. Getting literally three blind Pikachus in a row is a little bit, a little bit concerning. So perhaps this is not a genetic mix that should have happened. But we're going to go ahead and see what these babies will inherit. So Anna, you're up first. <gasps> you're so cute, Anna. Look at you! She got the big fluffy tail, and she did actually inherit that tail from their parent. Oh, I love the idea of having little albino peak or like little albino um, Eevees. That that's kind of really appealing. I've never even thought about that before. Like albino and melanistic variants of the animals, uh, of the Pokemon. I mean, we'll go ahead and give you the ears, and then we'll take away your whiskers because we don't have whiskers on these ones. And here we are, more or less the equivalent of an albino Eevee, which I imagine Midnight hair would look almost identical, except for the fact that Midnight has inherited the electric tail. So Midnight is going to have like hidden electric abilities, really stunning eyes. We'll take away those whiskers because neither of them have whiskers, the parents. And then let's give you those ears. Oh, look at the little tail! Okay, that's really cute. That would be kind of like another shock where you don't expect what's the equivalent of an albino Eevee to end up having electric powers. But speaking of those electric powers, let me roll the dice to see, and we will see if our little blind Pikachu will inherit their electric abilities so that they can find their way around. I hope so. <gasps> Fluffy boy! Fluffy boy Pikachu, and don't fret, he actually did end up inheriting the tail, not a skeleton tail. <laughs> there we go! Okay, Brandon, so you are going to be finding your way around using your electrical abilities, which I imagine will just, like, enhance them a lot. So maybe we will have produced, like, a new breed of Super Pikachu who are really able to use their electric powers. Let's see what Kimberly gets. 
Kimberly? Okay, pretty cute. We basically have Evie's floofiness combined. And again, this one inherited skeleton tail too. Like this is one of those mixes where I almost feel a little guilty of like, um, these genes didn't seem to be the healthiest. Why did all of the children turn out like this? <gasps> all right, there we go. But we have a more fluffy blind Pikachu who also is going to be able to use those electric powers like no other. And then finally, I'm rolling the dice again. Finally, we have a little Dexter, the last one. And Dexter, Dexter actually inherited the normal type tail. Hmm, freaking cute, but I'm not sure how this is going to work for Dexter. Uh, perhaps actually Dexter will be able to use Eevee's evolution abilities to evolve into something that we have never thought of before though. Okay, and that's really precious. Oh my gosh, I loved that with the little tail. Okay, that was really cute guys. And finally we have Addison who kind of turned out to be like a different colored Eevee, we'll say. A little bit more like a raccoon. I wonder if there's a, oh, and we need normal type tail for Addison. Oh, it's kind of a small tail, <laughs> Addison. Oh my gosh. I wonder if there's like some genetic link between a Pikachu uh, and a raccoon, because that would be kind of hilarious. Maybe we should try breeding Pikachu and a raccoon. I love that idea. But there we go, guys. A slightly modified Eevee Pikachu. Uh, and three blind children. That sounds like the three blind mice. Who have powerful electric abilities that might take them to places no Pokemon has ever gone before. That mix was interesting. I think I, I, I need to take the message and maybe see what Pikachu and a raccoon looks like next, but we'll have to see because the options really are endless. Thank you guys so much for joining me. If you could, do please leave a like so that we can toss some berries to our Pokemon crossbreeds for treats. If you would like to join us on this and literally thousands more adventures, do please consider subscribing. But most importantly, my friends, stay curious. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.